In the last topic then we had a look at transition metals in the middle of the periodic table. Now what we want to do is we want to extend that a little bit further and actually look at the metallic structure and look at the actual properties of metals and the point here is we need to make sure if we're asked an exam question using a, a metal that we make sure we actually describe the properties that suit that particular uh, example that's being given. So most elements are metals rather than non-metals. For example, copper and iron are metals, quite obvious. Copper is a good conductor of electricity. It's used to make brass and electrical wiring. Iron is used to make steel and this is used to make cars and bridges because it's strong. In general, metals have um, common uh, properties. They are hard, they are shiny or lustrous, they are good conductors of heat and electricity. Many metals have a high tensile strength so they can resist being stretched and they also have high melting points and boiling points. So if we looked at um, um, the actual structure again, so uh, metal atoms are actually held together by metallic bonds and are packed very closely in a regular arrangement. If you remember drawing a solid uh, when you were in year seven and you drew all the particles in straight lines and uh, one above the other and one next to each other, that's what you're looking at when you're talking about metals in particular. The overlap um, allows electrons to move about freely and the structure can be described as closely packed metal ions in a sea of delocalized electrons and that's why we can we can say that metals are good conductors of electricity um, because of the movement of the delocalized electrons. The strong forces of attraction between the metal ions and the delocalized electrons are responsible for the high melting point and boiling point. Now if we look at something called superconductors and this exam question is coming up more and more just lately because it's something that um, students, um, with, it's, with technology it's becoming more and more useful. Um, so. Um, if we're looking at metals they're able to conduct electricity as we said because the metals are very close together and the electrons can move from atom to atom. At low temperatures some metals can become superconductors um, and this is because they have very little or no resistance to the flow of electricity. Very low resistance is useful when you require a powerful electromagnet very fast electronic circuits, power transmission that does not lose um, energy. Scientists are currently work, uh, trying to find superconductors that will work at room temperature as currently the working temperature is minus 200 degrees which is costly to maintain and impractical for large scale uses. So um, this is what, uh, where we're looking at moving forward. Uh, with you know superconductors can be used to make super fast electronic circuits leading to extremely powerful computers uh, they could also be used to replace traditional metal cables that carry electric from power stations to our homes offices and factories and there would be little or no loss of energy from superconducting cables as they would have uh, little or no resistance okay